Twister at Knobles is one of the most overshadowed wooden roller coasters out there, and it's not hard to see why. Twister exists in the same park as Phoenix, one of the best wooden roller coasters in the world. But I think Twister offers a much different ride experience and complements Phoenix quite nicely. After the wildly successful project to relocate Phoenix from the defunct Playland in San Antonio in 1985, Knobles wanted to relocate another classic wooden roller coaster in 1998. This time, they had their sights set on Mr. Twister at Illich Gardens. Mr. Twister opened at Illich Gardens in 1965. The coaster was designed by John Allen and built by the Philadelphia Toboggan Company. This ambitious twister was marketed that it didn't have a foot of straight track. And for most of its life, the ride was beloved by both locals and coaster enthusiasts. But it didn't start off as a hit. In its inaugural season, Mr. Twister stood just 72 feet tall. It originally featured a curving first drop that led straight into the famous double helix. Those who rode the original version of Mr. Twister claimed the original iteration of the ride was pretty slow and tame. So for the 1966 season, John Allen modified Mr. Twister. After just one year, Mr. Twister had a pretty extensive change. The ride's height was increased from 72 to 98 feet and two large drops were added at the start of the ride before transitioning into the ride's original layout. This modification was a smart decision as this resulted in the wild and wonderful Mr. Twister that operated for the next three decades. In 1995, Elitch Gardens moved from their original Northwest location to their current location in downtown Denver. The reasons for this were clear. The old site had no expansion space and the new space was roughly three times bigger. But there were downsides to the move. Elitch Gardens was unable to relocate either of their classic wooden roller coasters in Wildcat and Mr. Twister. So both these classic wooden coasters would be lost. Mr. Twister sat idle from 1994 to 1999. Rather than relocate Mr. Twister, Elitch Gardens had John Pierce design an all new Twister for the brand new Elitch Gardens called Twister 2. The ride is advertised as being built wilder the second time around, but those who rode both versions say it's no contest. The original version is far superior. Twister 2 is often criticized as one of the slowest and roughest wooden roller coasters out there. Since Elitch Gardens had no plans to relocate Mr. Twister, Knobles looked into repeating what they did with Phoenix. However, there were some complications. The original Mr. Twister was too big for their proposed site at Knobles. So Knobles got creative. They purchased the blueprints for Mr. Twister and decided to rebuild the coaster from scratch, making the necessary modifications for it to fit into the smaller site. And the coaster opened in 1999 to much fanfare. The Knobles Twister is located adjacent to the Crystal Pool and Campground. For Twister to properly fit on the site, the designer, John Fetterman, made a few changes. First, the ride was mirrored. Second, the famous double helix now wraps around the station. Because this took away space in the brake run, Twister had to use skid brakes at the end, as opposed to the pinch or magnetic brakes found on most newer wooden roller coasters. Third and most notably, Twister has a very unique split lip hill to reach its maximum height of 102 feet. Other coasters have had multiple lifts but Twister is unique for how the first and second lifts are quite literally stacked on top of each other. These three design changes allowed Twister to retain its signature elements, the two large drops at the start, the massive double helix, and the twisted finale. And for a wooden coaster built in house, Twister came out incredibly well. It was very well received by coaster enthusiasts and park goers alike, and it's why it's one of the park's signature attractions. Despite being a long ride, Twister usually has a minimal line thanks to lightning fast dispatches. The coaster has no air gates nor seat belts, so operators are able to dispatch trains in less than 30 seconds, and that's not an exaggeration. Because of this, I have never waited more than 15 to 20 minutes for Twister, even on a busy weekend day. In terms of the best seat, that depends entirely how well Twister has been maintained. If Twister is running smoothly, my favorite seat is the back row, just by a hair. You get some great airtime and initial drops back there, and the rest of the ride feels pretty similar to the front row. 
If Twister is running a bit bumpy, I do prefer the front for the smoother ride experience. In 2020, Twister was running smoother than ever, so I have a slight preference for the back row this year. And it really is impressive how well Knobles maintains Twister. This wooden coaster has an aggressive layout with elements you'll often find on a GCI. And if you look at some of the early GCIs like Hershey Park's Wildcat, Six Flags America's Roar, and Busch Gardens Tampa's Gwazi, those twisted layouts became incredibly rough due to the heavy PTC trains struggling to navigate that twisted layout. Those trains tore up the track. Twister uses the same PTC rolling stock as the early GCIs, but Knobles takes such good care of Twister that the ride has never become uncomfortable. At its worst, Twister was just a bit bumpy. And that's all the more impressive when you consider this coaster's pacing. Twister feels like it gets faster as it goes. The second half in particular feels absolutely wild with the bunny hills and underground tunnel, but more on that in a bit. Twister begins with the aforementioned split lift hills. The 180 degree turn between the two lifts is one of the ride's most underrated elements. You drop slightly off the first lift into this turn, so you gain some speed in this turn. And since this turn is super tight and completely unbanked, you get some powerful laterals before continuing up the second lift. When you crest the second lift hill, you are treated to a beautiful view of the front half of Knobles. And much like the first lift, you drop into a turnaround and whip around another 180 degree turn. Like the first one, this one is very sharp and completely unbanked, so you get another dose of powerful laterals. You then crest the 90 foot drop, and this is a solid first drop. The drop feels much larger than it actually is, and you dive below the ride's impressive wooden structure. In the back row, you get some solid floater airtime in this drop. You then fly into this turnaround, and this is probably the best element for airtime on the ride. Up front, you get some strong ejector airtime atop this element. It always catches me off guard just how strong this airtime moment is. You then traverse another unbanked turn, getting some mild laterals here, and then dive back down to the ground. And while back row riders didn't get any airtime on the ascent, they get plenty of air time on the descent. This drop gives stronger air time than that first drop. It's either strong floater or decent flejector depending on the day. Twister then rises up into a minimally banked hill and drops riders into the giant double helix. The sense of speed during this helix is incredible because you have all sorts of near misses with the ride structure and exit path. In terms of laterals, the strongest laterals are experienced at the top of this element oddly enough. The banking is less up there due to the slower speed, so you get slammed to the right side of the train. The bottom of the helix offers milder laterals. This is a stark contrast to the double helix on Legend, where the laterals are equal in strength throughout the element. Twister then hits a bit of a dead spot. You traverse this really gradual hill, fly around a low to the ground turn, and navigate this elongated bunny hill. While the ride does maintain its speed throughout these elements, the profiling is less than ideal for airtime. Plus, that low turn is banked, so there are no laterals in this turn, unlike the other turns in this ride. Thankfully, Twister kicks it into overdrive at this point and finishes with a bang. The second bunny hill is deep within the ride's structure, and this one delivers a quick pop of ejector airtime, regardless of where you're sitting in the train. You then dive to the right and zip into a surprise underground tunnel. This is where the on-ride photo is located, so the dark tunnel is even more effective. The exit from this tunnel delivers another burst of ejector airtime, again, regardless of where you're sitting. And that's really surprising because there isn't even a drop on the other side. You simply have that much speed exiting the tunnel that the hill provides airtime in every row. You then turn to the right and fly over the short dip before hitting the brakes. And like the prior few hills, this hill gives another pop of ejector airtime. One last thing to note about Twister is that night rides are exceptional. Because of the coaster's dense wooden structure and location adjacent to the woods, there is no light on the backside of this coaster once the sun goes down. It feels completely out of control when you can't see the twists and turns coming. The coaster I would most compare Twister to is a CCI wooden roller coaster that actually opened a year later in the Legend at Holiday World. The layouts follow a similar sequence of elements. Both start with large drops before transitioning into a double helix and an airtime filled return run. 
and both rides can be heavily impacted by how rough they're riding in a given year. But in general, I find both rides to more often than not run pretty darn smoothly. I do prefer Legend though, because it's a longer ride with a slightly stronger laterals, a few more airtime moments, and no dead spot in the middle of the ride. But in general, if you like Legend, you'll also like Twister, or vice versa. So what would I rate Twister? I'd give it an 8 out of 10. Twister has a brilliant layout offering a little bit of everything. You have strong pacing, decent airtime, and good laterals. I just can't quite give it a perfect score for two reasons. One, I have gotten some bumpy rides on it in the past. And two, the ride does have that dead spot in the middle of the ride that ruins the otherwise perfect pacing. But considering I tend to prefer airtime based coasters, that just goes to show how good Twister is at what it does. So what are your thoughts on Twister, or even the original Mr. Twister, since it sounds like they ride very similarly? I would love to hear your comments down below. If you enjoyed this review, I'd appreciate if you gave this video a like and consider subscribing because there will be more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for listening.